Good day, amen. amen. It's good to be in God's house today. So many times we take it for granted, and I'm so thankful that you're here today with us here at Emmanuel Baptist Church, and I just thank the Lord once again for another day to be in God's house. This is a day that he has made, and we shall what? Rejoice in it. Amen. Appreciate each and every one being here. Uh, if you visit us this morning, please stop by the Welcome Center and uh, Fill out a visitor's card if you feel led, and I'll have a little gift for you back there. Also, if you don't have a home church, if you're looking for a home church, we'd love to have you here at Emmanuel Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. With well, that said, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and we've got a lot to discuss this morning as far as announcements and stuff, and go right on with the service this morning. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do come to you once again today, Lord, just thanking you for another day you've blessed us with, Lord, a day that we can come out to your house, Lord, Father, and just uh, worship you, Lord, fellowship with one another, Father. Lift up our brothers and sisters, Lord, in Christ, Lord, that is, have some heavy burdens on them today, Lord. But, Father, I'm so thankful, Father, for that one, Lord, Lord, that's there with us, that sticketh closer than a brother, that will never leave us nor forsake us, even in times of need of discernment, Lord. We don't know what's going on in our life or where we at or what's happening, Lord. We still got to not look at our circumstances and keep our eyes upon thee, Lord. I pray now, Father, for the services today, Lord, that you get honor and glory through the songs that are sung, through the message, Lord, that is shared this morning, Father. And, Lord, as we approach uh, Christmas, Lord, and just always remember, Father, what Christmas is all about, Lord. And as we discuss Wednesday night, Lord, turning a holiday into a holy day. And, Father, I just thank you, Lord, once again for what you've done, but even greater what you're going to do in the days ahead. And we ask all this in Christ Jesus' name and all of God's children said, Amen. First and foremost, I want to thank all those that come out yesterday. My, what a great time we had. Carolyn at the nursing homes. If you could have just seen the faces, if you could have seen the smiles, if you could have seen the tears, if you could have been there to, to hold on to those folks and hug them, those that many times are forgotten about even by their own family. My, my, they say, what a blessing y'all were. No, nah, they were the blessing to me because it made me realize how blessed I am to be able to be with a church family, to have my family and not be there. And I'm thankful for those that, that uh, uh, made a priority to come out yesterday and, and do that. Thinking about even doing it again. Maybe going out to some of our widows and widowers' house and singing carols at their home. What a great way that would be before uh, the Christmas season is over. Also, I want to thank all those that helped with the, the Christmas parade there. Uh, it was really good. We got all that put together and had a lot, I forgot, 27 or so on the float. And Biggest thing was we took a, we passed out, probably could have passed out 300 brochures, but we passed out 125, and most of it was the unchurched folks. So just planting the seed and being faithful to God and just trusting in Him. So I just thank each and every one for that. As far as announcements, if you got your bulletins, we've got a, a lot going on. Of course, remember, we will be having our uh, Christmas supper uh, on the 18th at 5.30. So there's a sign-up sheet back there. If you would, just sign it up to sort of give us an idea of what's going on. We would ask if the ladies or the men, either one, would bring a dessert. Everything else will be covered uh, as far as drinks and, and the main meal. So that's uh, remember that, the 18th at 5.30. Also, you have an adult choir practice tonight. Adult choir practice tonight at 4.30. Uh, come on out for that. And, of course, we always have children and youth choir practice on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock along with Bible study. December the 17th will be choir dress rehearsal at 4 p.m. Uh, the 18th, there again, will be practice after the 11 a.m. service. And then, of course, remember our Christmas dinner, as I said. On Christmas Day, we will be having a program that morning, the cantata and all, at 10 o'clock. No Sunday school. Uh, the program will be at 10 o'clock, and there will be no evening service. So remember that and keep that in your mind. Okay, what else have I got here? Uh, we sold our cans out here, uh, $101.50 for their cans. Thank for all those that brought uh, those cans. So if you got cans, we'll have our trailer back out here. I don't think it's out here yet, so remember that also. A few thank you cards are here. I read them Wednesday night, but I'll read them again. Once again, thank you for volunteering with the Community Thanksgiving Ministry. Together we prepared a 1,000 meals, and all were delivered or picked up. We find great joy in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and being his hands and feet. Your time, dedication, hard work was appreciated. That's from Fairview Baptist Church. That was for the Thanksgiving meal. We donated about 1,000 rolls for that meal, and they fixed 1,000 plates and reached those that were in need. Also, uh, we have a couple of thank you cards here that says, Thinking of you, this is in uh, love and memory of Everett Woody with deepest sympathies, and that's from Anchor Baptist Church. 
Uh, we have uh, a $50 check that was given in memory of Brother Elmer from the town of Golston. Another $50 check that was given in memory of Brother Elmer uh, from Jimmy or Jim and Betty Thomas out of Sanford. So remember that. Uh, there's a school prayer list on the back. On the second Sunday night or second Monday night of every month, they've started the, the few churches have started up. If you would like to go out to one of the school systems, uh, we're going to meet there at 6:30 the second Monday night. We're going to have prayer for our education system. It, 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 listen, don't claim, don't grumble and gripe and complain about it if you're not willing to pray for them. Amen. That's like anything. So if you want a list of those schools, if you want to ask me or talk to me more about it, there's a list back there on the vestibule table. Also, we have some ornaments right here that was made by one of our church members. Uh, we want to give one out to each couple, each family that has a tree, or each single person that may not uh, be married. If you got a Christmas tree, please see me. I have gave out several. Uh, at the end of church, if you want to just uh, see me or raise your hand, we'll get these ornaments out to you. This was made, uh, and, and they are pretty. It says, Oh, Holy Night, and I think you would enjoy that, and that's just a token of memory of Emmanuel Baptist Church. Okay, what else I've got? Okay, Toys for Tots is our 32nd annual uh, memorial foundation. That's the Mark Westbrook profit or nonprofit uh, Toys for Tots. They have in their meal today down at Beef Feeders from 11 to 4. A uh, donation of $10 will bring an un unwrapped children's toy or either five cans or boxes of non-perishable food. They'll be serving chopped barbecue, barbecue chicken, coleslaw, baked beans, rolls, tea, soda, dessert. And then uh, they have kids' plates all took so with chicken nuggets and barbecue or a combination. Also, they'll have Santa there from 12 to 3 for the kids if they want to take pictures there. If you, if you want more information on that, see me. That's today between 11 to 4 at Bee Feeders. I'm about out of breath. So, okay. I believe that's all the announcements I had. Did I miss anything? A lot going on. Okay. All right. If that's it, then I believe we got a congregational song at this time. Would everybody else stand? We're going to sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Let's all stand.
time, if we could have our ushers come forward for the morning offering. Let's pray. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you, Father, and we bow before your throne, Lord, humbly as we know how. In Jesus' name, Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for just every blessing you bestow upon us. Lord, we thank you for each one here today, Father, and we pray for those that are not. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you touch those that are sick and afflicted, Father, those in the hospitals, Lord, those in the rest homes, Lord. We just pray, Lord, you pour out a blessing upon them this day, Father. Lord, we just pray, Lord, most of all now, Lord, for that one that don't know you as Lord and Savior, that one that's going to be eternally lost, Lord. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you'd open up hearts, Father. Lord, that you'd give us words to share as we're out in the streets, Lord. Lord, that, Lord, we would tell them of your precious love and mercy and grace, Father. Lord, I pray for our pastor this morning, Lord, as he breaks the bread of life to us. Lord, help us to open our hearts and our minds to hear what thus saith the Lord. Now, Lord, we ask you, Lord, as we prepare to take up this offering, Father, Lord, that you bless the gift and the giver. Father, use it for the furtherance of your kingdom, Father. We pray for that one that has to give and that one that has not to give, Father. And, Lord, we're going to give it all to you. And thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> We have some special music this morning. Girls, if you want to come on up here first this morning and share what the Lord's laid on your heart. Okay. Surrounds me 
Like a bitter pill, I'm swallowing, I can barely take a breath. And when addiction steals my baby girl, and there's nothing I can do, my only hope is to trust you. I trust you, Lord, in the eye of the soul. Brother Russell. Thank you. Thank
to bride finding what she's always waited for when we find ourselves that day in you where the hungry feast at the table the blind frozen by colors in view the lame will dance they'll dance Star and angels gave the sign. Bow to babe on bended knee. The Savior of humanity. Unto us a child is born. He shall reign. 
Children's Church, 5 to 7. Children's Church, 5 to 7. You're dismissed at this time. God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. You know, we're approaching Christmas time. We can preach messages on what we can learn from Joseph, what we can learn from Mary, what we can learn from the wise man. We can talk about Advent and joy and hope and peace. And that, all that is truly, truly good and a blessing. But the next few services I believe we're going to concentrate on just a couple of things and one main thing why did Jesus really come why did Jesus really come do we really acknowledge that in our mind and in our heart you know I think about the parade yesterday as we seen uh, manger scenes and we seen the birth of Jesus and that's all wonderful and it's all great and there's messages in all of that but we need to really get back down to, you know, really, I think, some purpose statements that are made by Christ himself. And I think whenever we'll take that to heart, it'll truly make a difference in our lives for Christ. And why did Jesus really come? The fact is this, though. He did come. He came. And when you look at 1 Timothy, we're not, that's not going to be our main verse this morning, but I believe we got it pulled up. 1 Timothy Chapter 3 and verse 16, it says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into his glory. You see that? In other words, there's no controversy about this. Jesus did come. You're going to have to get past that right there. You've got to believe that with your whole heart. This morning, you're not going to get nothing else. Jesus did come. It's a real and true account of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I pray that you believe that the eternal Son of God left and laid aside his glory. His glory up there in heaven put on a robe of humanity and came to this earth. It's not just about did he come, but it is rather this. Why did he come? And I believe you'll get something out of this. I know I did in studying this in the next uh, few services that we have, Lord willing. And, and, and I did why did he come at Christmas every year there again we spend so much time talking about how he came yes uh, the virgin birth and he was uh, laid in a manger and all those things and I think far too often we forget and ne neglect the greater truth and the greater truth is not just how he came it is why he came Think about that this morning. If you don't think nothing else or hear nothing else this morning, why did our Lord Jesus Christ come? You see, our Lord Jesus Christ came on a divine mission. He came on a rescue mission from heaven to earth. And I'm so thankful today that he came on that rescue mission because I was in one in danger. I was one in need. And he thought about me, old Mike Garner, many, many years later uh, about where I was headed. And he came on that mission and a cause to save me, become his child, a son of the king. He came with a divine purpose to reach man for his glory and, so, and God. And, and so for the next few, there are, again, services uh, in between all the other things we have going on, uh, even if Chris, after Christmas, if necessary, we'll see where the Lord leads. I would like to look at some things straight from our Bibles, why Jesus came. And we begin this morning not by going to Bethlehem and not uh, to the manger. We're, we're not going to the beginning of the gospel records. No, I want us to go to the end. It was Spurgeon said this. He said these words here. If you want to make the most of your life, meditate on your death. If you want to make the most of your life, meditate on your death. He said that because the nearer you get to the end, certain things get clearer and clearer. And I found out in my life at 55 years old, I see much more clearer and clearer than when I was 30, the importance of having Christ in my life and following Christ. And that's what it's all about. There's a clarity when you're staring at eternity. And if you go to the end of Jesus' life, if you go almost to the cross, you'll see what I think is one of the greatest purpose statements that I found in all of the Word of God. And it's found in the Gospel of John. So if you got your Bibles, you can flip over to chapter 18 in John. And you'll see this over the next few studies, Lord willing. Uh, so many of these purpose statements 
are found, concentrated for us in the Gospel of John. Listen, how about just starting from the very beginning and read all the way through the Gospel of John. Now, they're scattered all throughout the four Gospel records. We know that. But John, who writes last, who writes this Gospel record that interprets really the other three and gives the spiritual application and the heavenly understanding of why Jesus uh, came, he especially emphasizes it. And when you come to John chapter 18, you come to the conversation that our Lord Jesus had with Pilate during his trial, or, or really his mistrial, because it was a mistrial. All it was was a bunch of lies. I mean, it was an illegal trial because it was based on lies that had been told on Jesus and even sold out by one of his own disciples, as we know as Judas. So during the trial of Jesus on his way to Calvary, that there's a, an, something interesting here. It's interesting to me, an interaction here between Pilate here, who thought he was in charge, and our Lord Jesus, by the way, is always in charge. You may think you might be in charge of where you're going in life, where you may be uh, studying at and going here and going there in your job. Listen, in the end, God's in charge. And at the fingertips of him, it can change in your life forever. Amen. He is in charge. Remember, Jesus said in John chapter 10 and verse 8, No man takes my life from me. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up. And so when you come to John chapter 18, you find a puzzled Pilate. Pilate, he's asking questions because he, he doesn't have answers. We see a man here, he's searching, he's trying to wrap his mind uh, uh, around it. He's trying to understand who this man is and why the people so much hate him and why his wife is so troubled and says, please have nothing to do with this just man. And why he has this unusual sense in his spirit that this trial here is different from any of the rest. And it was different. And so Pilate asked him a number of questions. And when you come here into verse 37, we see verse 37 here. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that, that, that I am a king. To the end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you today. We thank you for this time, this opportunity that we can come back to your house, Lord. And I pray now, Father God, as we approach Christmas, as we think about you sending that precious little baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, Lord, born of a virgin, Father. That, Father, that that baby was sent for a purpose. It was on a mission, Father, to save all of humanity. And I pray now, Father, as we uh, get into your word this morning, Father, for just a few minutes, that you would speak through me, because there again, I can do nothing without you. Let the sweet Holy Spirit flow through me, Father, as a dying man to dying people. And I pray now, Father, that you'd speak to all of our hearts during this time. And Lord, it's just always think, not of just a holiday, but as a holy day. And that every day for a Christian should be a holy day. Now, Lord, I thank you for this day. It's such a blessing. I thank you for the breath you give me to be up here this morning, for the way I got here, Father, through a car, through a home, through a house with power, to be here, Lord, this morning, to be with my church family. And I pray this morning above all, Lord, if there's one here today that's burdened down, that it's one here today, Father, that hasn't come to that saving knowledge of your grace, a sinner in need of a Savior. I pray, Father, that heart will be convicted this morning. My, we will rejoice. The greatest gift ever given. Your sweet, sweet saving grace and love. And we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. When you read part of that verse 37 there, I see that our Lord Jesus, he is the king. He is your king this morning? Is he truly your king this morning? You remember, Pilate would make the inscription, what? King of the Jews. And would write it and hang it above his cross in different languages. Yes, Jesus was the king of the Jews. But he was more than the king of the Jews. He was the king of kings and lord of lords. He's the king of glory. He's our king and he's our savior. And we need to start living like we serve a living savior and not a dead savior. 
Listen, look around us. Look where the world is. Look what is going on even in our community. And we point fingers and we do this and we blabble, blabble, blabble about I don't like this and I don't like that. Listen, we have got to stand and do something about it. We have got to be the feet and hands of Jesus. Look what he's done for us. Amen. I love that. The king of kings and lord of lords. He's the king of glory and the king of eternity. He's the king of it all. And, and so it's interesting to hear Jesus say to them there in verse 37, Thou sayest that I am a king. And Jesus gives these words in verse 37. Man, what a powerful statement. Listen to this again. Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end, I was born, I underlined that, and for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness, bear witness unto what? The truth. Everyone that, it, that is of the truth heareth my voice. That's Jesus talking there. Jesus, man, what a powerful taste, testimony there, statement. Now, over, uh, over the next, there again, I said few service, we're going to walk through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we're going to highlight some of what you could say. I want you to get this in your head. The purpose statements of Jesus out of his own mouth. This is not Mike talking to you. This is Jesus' word here that we see these precious red letter words. Most of them, why Jesus came. You know, in business today, there is a lot of talk about purpose statements. There's a lot of talk about mission statements. And here there is a slight yet different thing when I got to thinking about this. Important difference between the two. A purpose statement is really a long-term goal. I have a long-term goal, and that's to see souls saved until God calls me home. It's the end of the, of the theme, you might say. The mission statement really concentrates more on the short term. Or the immediate, in, in, in other words, we got to fulfill the mission to accomplish the purpose. See, yesterday we had a, a mission. Our mission was to gather here at the church, get together, and go down to the nursing facilities. That was our mission. So we came together, and we went down there. We sung the songs. We, we, we uh, uplifted those residents there, shared the gospel with them. So we fulfilled our mission, but guess what? When we got done, our purpose was completed then. We, when we walked out those doors, the purpose, in a sense, was completed because we took the gospel to them through that mission. Do you understand me this morning? Am I getting there? Hopefully you will here in just a few minutes. So think about that. We got to fulfill the mission to accomplish the purpose. And so in Scripture, you're going to see a number of mission, mission statements. Our Lord Jesus healing. We've all seen that. Our Lord Jesus teaching. Oh my, my, what a teacher. Our Lord Jesus working. Yes, he worked. Work, work, work. Our Lord Jesus preaching. Uh, our Lord Jesus going. And yet all of those missions that he accomplished and fulfilled perfectly were all connected to his divine purpose. There's one divine purpose and why he came to this earth. And I hope you see that. To, 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 to the great goal for which he came. And listen to these words again. To this end was I what? Born. To this end was I born. It not it interesting that if you want to understand the birth, you've got to understand the end. You see, people love to talk about the manger. Yes, we love to have our nativity scenes. We love to have all that. And yes, it is great and wonderful. Just don't... Uh, Love to talk about the manger, the birth of little, uh, little Jesus, sir. But just don't talk about the cross. Many times people don't want to hear about the cross anymore. But we've got to hear about the cross. They want to talk about the little baby. They don't want to talk about why he came. What is the purpose and why he came? Hey, Jesus said, to this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world. You see, God planned your end and my end before he ever gave you and me our beginning. Do you know that? He done had it all planned out. And before our uh, Lord Jesus ever had that beautiful beginning in Bethlehem, in that manger, wrapped in those swollen clothes, the end was already accomplished. He had done accomplished. You remember, uh, Jesus is the lamb slain, what? 
from the foundation of the world. Jesus. This was God's plan through the ages. This is the, the mystery of it all. Do you remember in the Old Testament when God said to Jeremiah, before I ever formed you in the womb, I knew you, I sanctified you, I uh, appointed you to be a prophet unto the nations. And Jeremiah would turn around in Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 and say to God's people in verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. Jeremiah understood something. He understood something, and I hope you understand something. He understood God had the end already in view. See, God done knows the time, the exact second when I'll breathe my last breath on this earth. But see, I have a responsibility, and I guarantee every one of us, if, we, if, if he would give us a date right now with an audible voice and say, every one of you in Emmanuel Baptist Church, you've got to, to December the 25th, and I'm calling you home. I guarantee we'd all live our lives differently. But we should be living that way right now because my day may be tomorrow. Do you know that? My day may be tomorrow. But Jeremiah, he understood God had the end already in view. God had the purpose in mind all along. And I, and I want to say to you this morning, if you're going to understand Bethlehem, if you're going to understand the virgin birth, if you're going to uh, uh, understand those things, if you're going to, uh, to appreciate uh, Galilee, and if you're ready, uh, uh, really going to get and, uh, and grasp the spiritual meaning of Jesus' uh, birth and his life and ministry and his death and his resurrection, then you have to understand the end, his great purpose, his great purpose. And here it is. Jesus said these words, that I should bear witness and to the truth, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Now, Jesus spoke the truth. Every word that came out of his mouth was truth. Jesus lived the truth. He lived a sinless life. He lived a perfect life in every way. He fulfilled all righteousness. Thank you, Lord. But Jesus not only spoke the truth and lived the truth. Hey, Jesus is the truth. He is the truth. Remember John 14, 6, he says, He said, I am the way, the truth, and what? The life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by who? But by me. So remember that. Your church membership ain't going to get you there. Your little goody two-shoes ain't going to get you there. All the work that you want to do here in this church for the, for the glory of God, and we should do work, but not to get to heaven. We should do it because we love him. Amen. Only by him will I get there. When I come to a saving knowledge that I was lost, that I was in need of a, a Savior, and I came to an old-fashioned altar, and I cried out to him and said, Lord, I know I'm headed for eternal separation and damnation for you, Lord. I'm in need of a Savior. Oh, Father, please forgive me and save me. My life's never been the same. And I thank the Lord for that. I thank the Lord for that. And this is what Pilate had to understand. And this is what every person has to understand this morning. And that is why Jesus came. So we would know the truth of God. Jesus said, everyone that is, if, is of the truth heareth my voice. Did you hear that? Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. In other words, when I'm outside of God's will in my life, if I'm a child of him, he's going to chastise me, and I'm going to hear that voice. And I pray this morning that every one of you are hearing his voice. Because I can also show you in the word, listen, if you're not hearing his voice, if you're not being chastened and chastised by the sweet Holy Spirit, then my Bible tells me you're not one of his. Amen. Don't leave here. Don't leave here without knowing. I wonder this morning... Are you of the truth today? Of the truth today. Are you listening? Are you hearing? More importantly, are you applying? Do you know Jesus? Do you really know why? Why he came? Why did he come? I challenge you this morning. I challenge you over this Christmas, not a holiday, but a holy day. 
it is truly holy. But think about why did Jesus really come? He came because he loved you and he loved me and he loved all those out in our community. And I think about all those that when we was walking last night down the streets, as I asked, do you have a home church? The number that said, no, we don't go to church. We don't go to church. We don't go to church. They are souls. And if we believe in what we profess and what we possess, then we'll tell others why Jesus truly came. Because he loved you enough to die on that old rugged cross. He gave his best. God gave his best for you and me. And why is it that we can't give our best to him? Selfishness. Dear Lord, help me to understand more, more and more every day of your eternal purpose. Not only how he came, but Lord, why he came. Think about that this morning. I could go on and on, but I don't believe in dragging something out. I shared with you what God's laid on my heart this morning. And I pray that you'll mark those verses there in your Bible, that one verse especially, verse 37. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. This morning, are you hearing his voice? Are you hearing his voice as a child of God? Speaking to you of maybe something in your life that needs to be taken care of. Is he speaking to you this morning that you know that you're in a need of a Savior and you're not sure if you would die today that you would be with him? The obituary was full again this morning of people that thought they would be here today. Please, please, I beg you, don't leave here today if the Lord's dealing with you to ask him into your heart. The greatest gift you'll ever receive, something that is eternal, nothing that's going to turn into moth or rust or pass away. You'll be his and he'll be yours. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Father, we do thank you once again for another day. We thank you for this time and opportunity. We thank you for the songs that are sung. We thank you for the words, Father, that was shared this morning that we find in your word, the living word, the inspired word, the inerrant word, the holy word, the true word, the word from you, Lord, that you give us to live our life by. Father, this is a guideline. And Father, so many times when I've found myself in trouble, it's because I've been outside, you might say, the pastor that you put around me, that grazing field, because I thought the grass was green on the other side of the fence, but I found out shortly that it wasn't. My, my. Lord, I pray now, Lord, as Sister Cindy plays, as we all stand to her feet to be dismissed today. That, Lord, if there's one here today in need, Father, if there's one here, more importantly, that doesn't know you as their personal Savior today, Lord, I pray that they wouldn't care what anyone thinks, whether it's a friend, whether it's a parent, whether it's a, a husband or a wife, that, Father, they know in their heart if they're saved or not. Because the only one we're going to give account to in the end is you. And, Lord, I pray that you would speak to that heart now. Lord, if there's one here this morning, Lord, that's burdened down, we always want this altar left open for prayer. I pray that they would come and just give it all to you, Lord. Not looking at their circumstances, but looking to our Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for you coming. And Father, we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Is there one here this morning as the altar's open? Please come and pray.
Don't take it out those doors this morning. Give it all to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you truly believe in your Savior? Do you truly believe that He can answer your prayers? Now, I'm not saying it's going to be a bed of roses, and I'm not saying that it might be answered instantly like microwave popcorn like we want to. Listen, we may go through some trials, and we may go through some tribulations, and you will. We all will. But we got to remember, in the end, in the end, we will be with Him. Go through that fire. God will hold your hand. He'll see you through. He'll see you through. all of God's children said, amen. amen, amen. I appreciate each and every one being here tonight. Know that I love you. I'm so thankful for God, though, that loves you more than I could ever love you. And to be there with you when I can't be there with you. All of us. And I pray that you know that same God that I know, the God of the Bible. That same God, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Once again, I appreciate each and every one being here tonight or today. Remember tonight, tonight's services, we're going to do just something, a little something different. I hadn't even said much about it except to the deacons. Tonight, we're going to be showing a little a movie. It's going to be called Why the Nativity. It's illustrated. It's narrated by Dr. David Jeremiah. I think you'll really enjoy it. So please be here at 6 o'clock tonight. I think you'll really enjoy it. And it's Why the Nativity. So please come back out tonight for the services. And remember, Wednesday night also, Bible study. Uh, just continue to pray for that. Anything else before we close? Something I may have missed. All hearts cleared. All right. Also, I've got these ornaments up here for each family that wants an ornament. Come by up here at the front. I'll have two of the deacons up here right there at the box, deacons, and y'all hand, hand them to them. That's one per family. If you're not married and you're single, I also got one for you. If you don't get one, I know the man that can get you one. So you just let me know, and we'll get some more made. Amen. Amen. All right. All, all hearts cleared. If that's it, Brother John Pascal, if you would, close us in prayer. system we said is that